It always rains. Welcome! Today I got this really nice treat for you. It is a Belzer Vintage Socket Wrench set. And here it is. Ain't this case a thing of beauty? Sadly, there is a light scratch on the top of it already. But hey, does it really matter? Let's crack it open. Uh, to me, this is a thing of beauty. So, let's have a look around. From top to bottom you find the sockets, a long extension rod, a breaker bar, a T-handle, a short extension rod, a screwdriver handle, the wrench itself and the universal joint. Oddly, you can remove the universal joint and put it right into this hole. I don't know if this is original, but it opens up room for a bit holder. This one is made by Facom in France, but I want to change it into a original Belza one if I find any. This red handle seems odd to me too, and I believe that this black handle is the real one that belongs into this case. But hey, I think I'll keep the red handle inside this case because it can be also used as an extension rod. And now it's time for some close-ups. I'll show you the 6, 8 and 10 mm sockets so you can see how these sockets gradually taper. The quarter inch shafts stay the same diameter and have a nice knurl on them. To adapt to the change in diameter, they also change the height of their embossed writing. I always prefer stamped in letters to laser etched ones because they stay longer readable when they're scratched and they're visually more pleasing. Here in Europe it's very unusual to get polished chrome plating on high quality tools. Most of the times only cheap Chinese tools are polished. I always prefer matte chrome plating on the tools because they're easier to handle with greasy fingers. This is a closer look on the small extension bar. As it always promotes belts its high vanadium content of the tool steel. Every part is well finished and there is no sign of age. To keep this video short I show you 4 items at once. You've already seen the short extension bar up close and now let's have a look at their T-handle. To hinder the brace from falling off, each side is provided with a pressed in rivet. All components fit nicely and snuggle to each other without any noticeable play. And here's also one downside clearly visible. Fingerprints. Man, they're all over the place. But I like how breaker bar and wrench share the same handle with the origin embossed into it. The structure provides good grip despite the small size. And talking about the wrench, there's a button on it. But it doesn't really release the two because it needs the same amount of force to part them with or without the button being pressed. But let's get interesting. I've put a nut into a vise to measure the angle needed for one click to move the screw. And if you haven't already noticed, you turn the outer ring to change direction. I like proper measuring device for angles, but this is just to get a feeling of what this wrench is capable of. For some jobs a tight angle might be useful, for others should the wrench be trusty and has to withstand more force. Sadly, this tool comes from a time that does not focus on propaganda material with the useless facts like tooth count and low angles. For me, it was more important that none of the teeth sheared off already and to get a strong noticeable click without feelable play. And if your construction depends on low tool angles for mounting, you should clearly alter your design and rethink it. But hey, let's repeat this test for kicks with a real screw in the vise. As you can see, you need around 10 degrees of movement to be able to turn the screw with about 6 to 7 degrees of play between clicks. To me, this is tight enough. Two negatives that really bug me on this wrench set are that one axle of my universal joint is very tight, but I hope to wear it loose over time. 
and that the big nuts are very easily to remove, but you need to fight to get your small ones out. And even other tools are very tight within the case, so you need to remove the other tools that are around it. Why? What's the verdict in the end? Well, Belze was a tremendous tool company and capable of producing the finest tools of their period. But tools stay tools to me. I buy them not to collect them. I want to use them. So buying these vintage tools comes always to a price point. And considering the German-made socket wrench sets are about 300 euro, I would only spend half or less on a used or vintage one if it comes in this great condition. So, if you can get them, grab them. And that wraps it up for today.